students how are you all today we are going to discuss william cooper's on the receipt of my mother's picture it is prescribed on the syllabus of ba first year past course english literature for mohanlal sukhadia university udaipur william cooper was born in 1731 and he died in 1800 he was an english poet and he belonged to the age of sensibility or age of johnson which uh, extends from 1744 just after the de- death of alexander pope uh, to 1785 uh, just uh, before the arrival of romantic age so age of sensibility or age of johnson as it is called called it is the period uh, which uh, begins with the death of alexander pope who died in 1784 and 1785 uh, when samuel johnson dr samuel johnson died and uh, at the same time robert burns poems chiefly in scottish dialect came out and uh, the 1785 or 1789 or 1798 these are the alternative dates which are given as the beginning of the romantic period so the age of sensibility or age of johnson uh, can be considered as a as a precursor to romanticism so uh, the age of sensibility 1744 to 1785 in this period in this age uh, which is in fact part of the neoclassical period uh dr samuel johnson held a dominant position in the field of english literature and uh, as he was a notable english literary critic and opinion maker of literary tastes of this period and the more recent name age of sensibility uh which is also given to it to age of johnson it is given to a trend in english literature which came out with with the arrival of poets such as william cooper william blake uh, william collins james thompson and like them and like ad- uh, others like them uh, so there is a, a strain of melancholy and romanticism can be seen in the, their poetry and thomas gray is also a notable poet among them so they put their stress on the emergence in other writers of the 1740s and later of new cultural attitudes uh, that is to say that new cultural attitudes can be seen in their poetry new theories of literature and types of poetry in this period there was a growing sympathy for the middle ages in this period and a fashion a vogue for cultural primitivism primitivism means uh, going back to paganism uh, before the arrival of jesus christ in europe an awakening interest in ballads uh, ballads were revived and folk literature was revived in this uh, in this age and earlier there was a stress on neoclassic correctness neoclassic poets such as uh, such as alexander pope and before him john dryden they put stress on correctness and it's uh, it's emphasis on judgment and restraint to an emphasis on instinct and feeling was given by the poets of the age of sensibility the poets of this age like Uh, like william cooper in their poetry we see an emphasis on instinct and feeling it is a poetry of feeling it is the poetry of instinct of eternal human values the development of literature of sensibility above all the exaltation by some critics of original genius and a bardic poetry of the sublime and visionary imagination so these are the things which which are seen in their poetry uh as 
we have already already discussed that uh, poets like William Cooper, William Collins, William Blake, William uh, uh, Joseph, uh, James Thompson, Joseph, and Thomas Wharton, and Thomas Gray are those poets, along with Christopher Smart, and uh, two major works of literature came out in this period. One was Thomas Percy's Relics of Ancient English Poetry, which came out in 1765. And uh, uh, this work included many folk ballads. And uh, folk means uh, the literature by the local literature of a particular area, the traditional literature of a particular area, uh, which has a strong grounding in the linguistic background and the linguistic influence of that area. And uh, Thomas Percy's Relics of Ancient English Poetry uh, had many folk ballads and along with many medieval metrical romances. And uh, another influence can be seen uh, in this period is uh, the romantic strain in their poetry, the, sentiment, the sentimentality of the poets. And this period was also the period of great novelists like Samuel Richardson, Henry Fielding, Tobias Mollett and Lawrence Stern. In Samuel Richardson's affection, sentimentality can be seen. And uh, this period was then followed by a romantic period, which was uh, full-fledged uh, full fledged romanticism, which came out, uh, which, which started after 1785. And the major bre breakthrough in, in romanticism came, uh, came out with the publication of lyrical ballads by William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge. So, uh, as we have discussed that there, there was a shift in mood for literary creations in the age of sensibility. The age of sensibility was a transition from neoclassicism towards romanticism. As far as William Cooper is concerned, William Cooper, as we have discussed, is an English poet who belongs to the age of sensibility. He was a sweet, simple, instructive poet. He was a gentle, sensitive, deeply religious being. Uh, at first, uh, before become, be becoming a poet, he was called to the bar uh, for, for a profession in, uh, we can say, in, in law and appointed to petty, petty offices, soon went into retirement and devoted his time uh, writing poetry. And he, also, he was also fond of pets, of pet animals. The events in the life of Cooper were very few, but they were very remarkable. He was born of a good family, and he was sent to Westminster School, which was an elite school at that time, where like Gibbon, uh, he he met people like Gibbon, who came out of it with a great book of uh, with a great book about Roman history, about Roman Empire, and one of his masters was Winston Bourne, Vincent Bourne, uh, and whose latent poems he translated into English. And uh, from Westminster, then he passed in 1750 to study of law and led a normal and apparently happy life and uh, there were uh, as far as his uh, romantic life is concerned uh, his relation with his uh, cousins Harriet and Theodora is well known then later of whom he wanted to marry he wanted to marry Theodora the former was to come into his life years after but and the proper marriage was forbidden by Theodora's father uh, because uh, his fa uh, her father considered Cooper's disquieting tendency to morbidity. And uh, 
later it was uh, it came out that uh, cooper became deranged uh, that he lost his uh, psychological balance or mental balance he was so melancholic by nature and also because uh, he had lost his mother years ago and his uh, alienation and anxiety uh, had uh, proved too much for him and uh, then uh, he was also uh, he he was he also suffered from the uh, fits of insanity so such was the condition of william cooper and not only william cooper even william collins and many other poets of this period uh, of uh, of this age the age of sensibility uh, they suffered from fits of melancholy and depression anxiety etc and such is the environment also of thomas gray's elegy written in a country churchyard in which he expresses his melancholic concerns along with universal feelings and emotions so uh, as far as poem is concerned on the receipt of my mother's picture it is about uh, william cooper's mother and uh, cooper's strength as a poet lies in description and sentiment his range is limited both by his temperament and his experience no one before had described so well the sights and pleasures of domestic life in the country this is uh, the we can say the qualities of his poetry that he he described nature his he painted pictures of nature in a very simple and soothing manner the warm fire the hissing tea urn the arrival of letters the laborer trudging through the lanes the silent countryside under its load of snow so such are the pictures drawn by him cooper's sensitiveness and melancholy enabled him to write elegiac verse which is sincere and pure the note profound the most beautiful of his elegiac pieces are the lines on the receipt of my mother's picture which is of course we are going to read and discuss and the poem to mary uh, mrs anwen good taste sincerity and clarity of expression are the qualities which cooper's poetry seldom lacks and uh, though the note of sadness is frequently recurrent he should also be remembered as the agreeable trifler who could address his dog or describe his pet uh, here in verses full of charm so such is the sweetness the simplicity of uh, cooper's poetry and among his other better known poems are john gilpin and his last poem the castaway in many ways his poetry anticipates that of the romantic revival which of course was followed by this uh, by the close of the age of sensibility though it has marked affinities too with that of pope as well because uh, a dying influence of neoclassicism and neoclassic poetry can be seen in in the poetry of the age of sensibility even though uh, the poetry of this period is remarkably romantic so uh, to sum up cooper's poetry is simplicity and gentleness so uh, now let's talk about his poem on the receipt of my mother's picture on the receipt of my mother's picture out of norfolk Cooper had lost his mother when he was only 6 years old this poem was uh, this poem was written when in his uh, 58 year when he was considerably grown up or we can say that he he had almost spent his youth uh, he received his mother's picture as a present from his cousin mrs ann bodham of norfolk and in a letter to lady hesketh he says i had rather possess it this picture than the richest jewel in the english crown 
for I loved her with an affection that that her death 52 years since had not in the least abated even at the age of 58 cooper missed his mother so much that he has he has poured all his childhood experiences or or his experiences as a child into this poem that by reading this poem it doesn't look that this is a poem uh, written by a 58 year old man it seems that this this poem is by a child himself who is just 6 years old so uh, the poem is an admirable picture of the sensitive tenderness and filial affection of cooper its pathos is very striking it is written in iambic pentameter the usual meter of english poetry and the poem is one of the most moving poems of its kind it is characterized by the utmost sincerity and directness this is uh, a childlike simplicity about the writing there is a childlike simplicity about the writing it is indeed an artless song with which the poet honors his long dead mother Now as far as the main ideas of this poem are concerned the poem was inspired by as we have already discussed uh, by an unexpected receipt of his mother's picture by William Cooper he lost his mother when he was only 6 years old and he received the he received this picture when he was 58 years old the picture closely resembles his mother and revives tenderest feelings of love and respect towards her it also brings to his mind the happy days of his childhood the sight of the picture brings to cooper's mind all the caresses and his mother heaped upon him that his mother heaped upon him when he was a child he feels impelled to write the poem out of duty and love to honor the memory of his mother the poet remembers the day of his mother's death when he wept bitterly on hearing the sad news he was comforted by the maid servants uh, with the, with the promise that his mother would return soon however gradually he re- realized that she would not return at all he could never forget her he recollects uh, his old house where he lived under the loving care of his mother at the rectory of burkham burkhamstead Uh, his gardener robin used to take him to school he remembers how his dear mother came to his bedroom every night to see whether he had been put to bed comfortably she was always sweet and was never angry with him he will treasure the memory of this love to the last days of his life he wishes that his mother were with him then soon he dismisses the idea because he believes her to be happy in heaven he does not want to drag her down to this world which is full of sorrow and misery she has reached the island of the blessed his father too has since joined her there the poet then recollects his own state and finds it to be not so happy and fortunate as that of his parents His life is full of sorrow and suffering he is happy that at least his parents are in heaven that gives him comfort he feels proud that his parents have been admitted into heaven cooper concludes the poem by saying that though his mother is dead her power to soothe and comfort him is still there and time cannot take that away her influence will continue to cheer him up in the time of sorrow and need these are uh, this is the summation of this poem these are the ideas expressed by the poet in this poem on the receipt of my mother's picture out of her fork now let's read these lines oh that those lips had language life has passed with me but roughly since i heard thee last Those lips are thine thy own sweet smiles i see the same that oft in childhood solaced me voice only fails 
else how distinct they say grieve not my child chase all thy fears away the meek intelligence of those dear eyes blessed be the art that can immortalize the art that baffles times to rene claim to quench it here shines on me still the same so in the beginning cooper is thinking of the various distresses and sufferings in the shape of diseases and losses of care and affection which he had suffered since the death of his mother placing the picture before himself he addresses the portrait of his mother and says that since her death he has had a very painful and wretched life he looks at the lips in the picture and says that they are painted exactly like what they were in reality they had the same smile which she had on her lips when alive cooper says that the smile on the lips is exactly like what belonged to her it is the very same smile with which she used to console him when he was a child the only effect is that they cannot speak cooper always had a vague fear that he would never have salvation Salvation means the final freedom of the soul. His mother's smiling lips seemed to tell him not to weep or fear. She told him to dismiss all his apprehensions of not getting salvation. So the feeling of salvation usually comes to a uh, to a person who has matured enough, who has grown up and who has almost spent his life. But this idea came to a child now see the simplicity see the sincerity the sensibility of the child cooper that how he began to be perplexed uh during her, during his childhood so uh she told him she always told him to dismiss all his apprehension of not getting salvation he sees a look of mute sympathy and kindness which he used to receive from his mother when she was alive the poet thanks the immortalizing art of painting which can thus frustrate the cruel attempt of time to destroy it he says that the kind look of his mother shines before him in the picture exactly as it was in reality so this is the uh, gist the, this is the idea of these lines in which uh, a child in which cooper as a child tells us that how how his mother used to take away all his anxiety when he was a child and how his mother used to love him at that time so rest of the poem we will read in part 2 thank you for listening